Hey everyone, League is a really complicated game. It can be overwhelming at times when trying to think about all the different things you could have done better or won a game that you lost. But what if I told you that there is a secret win condition that 99% of the player base doesn't even realize exists and it's right in front of their face? Yes, even a lot of challenger players don't understand this. And it's these secret tactics that you're about to learn that actually help you climb ranks. Most players don't realize trying to mimic pro player high elo streams will only slow you down. They don't teach you how to exploit low elo like we do, which is necessary for carrying teammates from hell. That's why we can guarantee you'll climb 5 divisions while actively using our service at skillcup.com. It actually works. So check us out after this. In the meantime, let's uncover the secret strategy in today's guide. In this game I'm playing Oriana vs Azir in Masters Elo. First, look at these team fights. Twitch appears out of stealth with Yumi on him, I miss my ult like a noob, then the enemy Mord ults our jungler and we kill him as they come out. So we win that fight slightly since we got one kill and they got none. Now I'll take a look at this next one. Sadly, it starts out with me missing my ult again. I kinda hate that I chose this replay. But after a little bit of trading in river, we see Mordekaiser in mid lane and Camille jumps on him. Then he flashes away, just barely surviving. I linger in mid afterwards, looking to poke them until the enemy Azir jumps in and tries to flash ult me into them. He flashed too far, so I just dodged the ult, but I still need to flash over it. Because of this misplay from him, we kill him and two more, winning that fight 3 for 1. Alright, and one more fight to look at. It's gonna start here, with the enemy Twitch trying to push mid wave. My team is coming from bot side river. So Twitch starts running away into his topside jungle. But our Camille came from topside and flashes then ults him. This lets us kill the 7-0 fed Twitch. And once I arrive, I finally land an ult and clean up the fight. And we get an ace. Alright, let's go back to the first fight again. This time, specifically focus on the enemy Twitch. He comes out of stealth and I miss my ult. Then, notice he walks straight back under his Azir tower. So we couldn't really kill him after that. But in the last fight, Twitch was caught in pretty much the same exact spot. And notice... Because he didn't have a tier 1 tower, he had to take a different route and was cut off. And in the second fight, Mordekaiser was trying to push mid. And notice it was too dangerous for him too, because he didn't have mid tier 1. So we got him to flash away with low health. So what's the hidden win condition and the reason these fights are going the way they are? Mid tier 1 tower. It's almost impossible to lose a game with mid tier 1 tower up. They can take everything in bot lane, including the inhibitor, and everything in top lane. But if they don't have mid tier 1, they cannot win. I've been playing for almost 10 years and I've yet to see it without considering forfeit of course. Let me explain a bit more. The key here is to understand that it's not about us winning these team fights. The team fight is actually irrelevant. It's about how dangerous it is for the enemy team to try and get any kind of mid priority. If you don't know, mid priority is the most important macro concept in the game, even in pro play, and it just means whoever pushes midway first, because whoever pushes midway first has the first move to anywhere on the map. Think about that. Let's look at a few scenarios. Scenario 1. There's a 2v2 happening in top river, and the other 3 players are in mid lane for both teams. Break it down piece by piece. First, the blue team pushes mid wave before the red team. Now, this means they can be the first ones to move to the fight happening at top side. I know what you might be thinking though. What stops the red team from just leaving at the same time and ditching the mid wave? It's only 6 minions. Well, then they also leave their tower completely vulnerable. So, then the blue team doesn't even need to move to the fight. They can just keep pushing and take one if not two towers until someone stops them. So the red team needs to clear the minions first, then they can move to the top fight. Let's say that takes them 5 seconds. That's where that fancy word you have heard before comes into play, tempo. Blue team has a 5 second head start to the fight, so that means they have a 5 second tempo advantage. Because they can get there first, they should obviously win the fight. For this next scenario, both teams have 3 dragons and soul dragon is about to come up. Baron is down, so don't worry about that. The blue team gets mid prior, which let them move towards dragon before the red team. Now blue team can get vision control of the area, and the red team will have to face check them. We all know how those scenarios turn out. So those are two simple scenarios showing you how important mid priority is. There's plenty more, but those should do. Before we go any further, you might be thinking, these concepts probably don't apply to my elo because nobody's thinking about this stuff. And you're right about the second part, nobody's thinking about this stuff. But these kinds of things happen without you even realizing and give you more chances to make plays now that you understand what's happening. For example, in a low elo game, if we take the same first scenario, instead of respecting the mid wave, the enemy team will just leave it and run to the fight. This is where your knowledge from this video comes into play. You can take a look at the fight and think about if you would win it or not. And if you can't tell, or if you think it's a loss, you just take mid tower and push 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 until they make you stop. Then once someone comes and makes you stop, well, now you have a tempo advantage that can be used if something else is happening. If you have mid prior, the enemy team has to take an L somewhere. It's just up to you to punish them for not understanding this. Alright, so now that you understand mid prior and why it's important, now let's think about mid tier 1 and why it's the win condition. If you keep that tower up, 
you can pretty much always be all the way up in the middle of the map and be safe. So let's say the enemy team actually gets mid prior. Well, it's only going to be for a little bit since the wave hits the tower right away. But if your mid tier 1 is gone, you're all the way at tier 2 instead, so then they have double the tempo advantage. On top of this, look at what they get access to when they have mid prior and your tier 1 is gone. They can walk into either side of the jungle and contest any jungle camp. And if you want to get into your jungle, you're basically face checking. This is what I mean when I say this stuff happens without you realizing. The enemy team will have a lot of map control because they took tier 1, but they don't know that that's the reason. Let's look at another scenario. Let's say your side laners aren't doing too hot, but you're winning mid lane. So you have your tier 1, but the enemy team has taken your bot and top tier 1, and they are pushed up on both sides. A fight starts breaking out in your top jungle, so now the enemy bot lane wants to rotate to that fight. But because you have tier 1, they can't just walk in between your tier 1 and tier 2 mid towers, they have to walk all the way around. This is the map control that tier 1 gives. So just to make it clear, if you don't have mid tier 1, it's very hard to get mid priority without it being dangerous. And if you have tier 1, and they have mid prio, it's only for a small amount of time anyways. And finally, mid tier 1 gives an insane amount of map control because of those two things. I could keep making scenarios all day, so let me show you a real one again. In this game, I'm playing Yasuo and Masters. We're winning slightly with a 3k gold advantage. If we look at the minimap, they have taken one tower, our mid tier 1. We have taken their bot and top tier 1s. The enemy Sivir and Braum have been doing a good job keeping mid tier 1 up. And watch how hard it makes things for us. I push bot for tempo advantage, and head to mid looking to fight or prevent them from clearing the wave. Sadly, there isn't much I can do to them. If we pause, look at top lane. See how Garen is chasing the enemy Zed? Well, let's say we had their tier 1 down. Then we could push the wave to their tier 2, and we could all just run straight through their top jungle to that fight. But because we don't have tier 1, the enemy team can easily be there before us or cut us off if we tried. So you see how much map control that tier 1 gives? It's literally preventing us from being able to make a potential play. Anyways, we try again to force a fight to get this tower, but it's too hard and it fails the second time as well. And remember, we are the ones with an advantage here. We have the 3k gold lead. And if you're thinking, why don't you just go split push? Well, let's say I'm pushing bot or top. Guess who will always have the first move to me? Exactly, the enemy team because they have tier 1. It's way too dangerous to split push without that tower down. Even if we get mid prio, it's only for a few seconds. Alright, so what does this mean for you? It means that whenever you make a decision, you need to be taking into account what happens to mid tower if you die. When I'm playing something like Anivia and a sketchy fight is happening, I play it very, very cautious. Because if I'm alive, they can never take mid tier 1. So don't just coin flip fight and lose your easy win condition for no reason. Think about it, it can literally win you the game. That tower staying up is worth more than 1 or 2 kills you might get at a fight, so you really need to think about the risk. Also, it means if the enemy team makes plays that leaves their mid tier 1 exposed, don't hesitate to take that tower and don't get baited into fighting. That tier 1 tower is worth way more than a single dragon, and Lowey will give you a chance to take their mid tower every time a dragon comes up. And this is just a taste of the super effective strategy you'll find at skillcap.com. If you're serious about improving and wanting to rank up fast, then check us out. Link in the description below. That's going to wrap this one up. We hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.